Hi, and welcome to the first of our series of audio here on the Technical Excellence Training Video Series. My name is Gary. And I'm Jeff. And we're glad that you're here to learn about audio. And in this first DVD here, we're going to look at and discuss what audio is, you know, how it functions. Uh, Jeff, you know, there's common misconceptions about audio, and one of those is that it's this magical thing that just kind of happens, and if you have the right charisma in the room, the right <laughs> acoustics, the right speakers, in fact, if you use a certain brand of speaker, I can guarantee you it will sound good. You can, huh? Well, that's what the marketing claim is. That's what the marketing claim is. Marketing claims are a, a real interesting look at Gary, but basically what it comes down to is the sound. Um, and what we want to do is we want to take a look at what sound is. And one of the thing, first things that makes up sound is uh, energy. Basically, that's what sound is. It's energy. So when you say it's energy, it's not like uh, we're going to go plug something into the wall. <laughs> no, and, you it's know, not that get, kind get of energy. Some, get, get some voltage or... The kind of energy that it is, is it's vibrational energy. And usually the kind of sound that uh, we refer to that we deal with most of the time is vibration of the air molecules. Sound of my voice vibrating the air molecules getting to your ears, which picks up those, uh, the vibrations. Sound can travel through other things besides air, but mostly what we're talking about is vibrational energy in air. So if it's energy, what is it that kind of makes it up or how do we perceive that energy and Give us a little more there. Well, let's look at this vibrational thing. In order to make sound, something's got to vibrate. Um, whether it's your vocal cords or whether it's your, uh, your lips on a, you know, on a trumpet mouthpiece or uh, a speaker that vibrates. What this vibration does is it, uh, it, it moves and it bangs into air molecules. And then it moves backwards and it, what we call rarefies the air molecules. In other words, it creates a vacuum. And then it moves forward again and it bangs into more air molecules. And what this does is it sets up a wave. You know that you you bang you bang into this thing and it sets this wave motion in action. That's basically the the energy that we talk about. That sound is it's it's in form of waves. So when we say you can feel the sound, you can. It, it's it, uh, you, it's definitely it's, it's an energy that you can feel. It, it it vibrates things. It vibrates things in your pants and in your on your shirts and things and in, in, in your ears and your body. So you can feel the sound. Yes. Obviously. Uh, Extreme levels. Extreme you know? levels. Yeah, you're not feeling my voice talk. I think you're feeling the love in the room, but probably not feeling. Yeah, Gary, you know, the physical yeah. effects of my that, voice that, talking. That's okay, Gary. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, this vibration. There's a couple characteristics of this vibration. Uh, the first one we want to look at is how fast this vibration happens. How many times it happens in a given amount of time? Basically, a second. Does this happen real fast in a second, or does it happen very few times in a second? That's what we call a frequency of sound. You already already jumped into this cycles per second. <clears throat> cycles per second. In other words, the time uh, you know the, the the cycle would be compressing the air and rarefying the air is one cycle, because then it happens over and over again. Okay, so we've got a cycle, um, and how many cycles, how many times this happens in a second is is what we how frequently it happens. So we call frequency. Frequencies is the number of times that something happens per second. Now, with sound, um, what frequency is, is, is what we perceive as pitch, the difference between a high-pitch sound and a low-pitch rumbly sound. We've got low-frequency sounds, low-pitch sounds, low-frequency meaning that that wave happens low number of times per second versus higher-frequency sound, high-pitch sounds, that wave happens a lot more times per second, higher frequency is what we hear as pitch. Um, you know, the difference between a cymbal crash and a kick drum high frequencies versus low frequencies, the wavelengths that happen very fast versus wavelengths that happen very slow. Now on the cycles per second, what's another name for that? Another name for that is hertz. Kind of like? Not that kind of hertz. Did it hurt? No. Oh. Hertz is named after Dr. Hertz. No, not Hertz rental car either. He's the guy that, that discovered the, this characteristic of sound. And so what we call you know, the vibrations per second is hertz. Now our ear can perceive these, uh, you know, these vibrations from about 20 hertz, 20 times per second, 20 vibrations per second, all the way up to around 20,000 vibrations per second, 20 hertz, 20, 20 kilohertz, 20 K. K equaling thousand. thousand. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So that's what our, our human range of hearing is, is about from 20 to 20,000. Now as you uh, get older or as certain, you know, gentlemen are more susceptible to losing their high frequency hearing. Than, uh, than women are, but we lose our hearing 
from the top down, so we lose those upper frequencies. So you and I probably can only hear up to about 15 kilohertz instead of 20 kilohertz. Speak for yourself. We'll test you later, Gary. So that's as we lose. Actually, our, I'll test Jeff later. As we, as we lose our hearing, we lose it from the top down. And uh, you know, if you're really hard of hearing, you're losing a lot more than just you're losing down into the to the speech range of the frequencies. Um, now let's pause there a minute because we're diving into frequency here, mm -hmm. and let's lay that out. You said 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, kind of low frequency to high frequency. That's correct. So in looking at that, let's put some terms around that, like you know, a kick drum. Kick drum, about 100 hertz. So 100 cycles per second. 100 cycles per second, 100, 100 vibrations per second is a kick drum. Um, let's say we've got a French horn. It'll go from around 200, the very lowest, all the way up to about 4,000. French horn is a very broad instrument. Piano, the same thing. A piano will actually go down to around 30 hertz, very, very low, and those very low notes on a grand piano all the way up to about 4,000 hertz on some of those upper frequencies. Whereas a, a piccolo, actually, the high frequency notes on a piccolo are between four to 5,000 hertz. So not really as high as what you'd think. Even uh, uh, the cymbal crash is about 10,000 hertz. Now you may say, well, you can hear all the way out to 20. What's out there? Well, from 10 to 20, there's just a lot of uh, a real high frequency stuff that's hard to perceive, but it adds kind of an air effect to the sound. Yeah, well, you know, we talked about testing our hearing. Do you think you can hear past 15K? Probably slightly, yes. Slightly? Well, let's, let's give it a test here. I have in my hand before I blow, I should say, a trusty dog whistle. You ready? Yeah. You think it'll work? I'm impressed. His hearing actually does go higher. Now, you may have heard there the harmonic of about 11K that was on the, uh, the whistle there, but this here, tuned to... What frequency? About 22K. About 22K, so beyond the human hearing. And so the element we heard there is obviously sound produces harmonics as well. And well, the reason the dog whistle works is because the dog's hearing actually goes out to 30 to 40K. So dogs have a lot broader range of hearing. They can hear a lot higher frequencies and a lot more sensitive in those upper areas. So you're saying that you're a dog? I've got the hearing of a dog. And the looks, but let's not go there. Now, another thing that happens is you've commonly heard a piano tuned to A440. Go right ahead, Gary. I saw you suck on that earlier. He loves me. You can feel the love in the room. That's about as musical as I get, by the way. You know, and we've heard that. A piano's tuned to A440, so they take the A on the piano, and that's 440 hertz cycles per second. That's correct. Exactly. Now, where this becomes really important in understanding sound is you need to be able to kind of quantify what you're hearing. And the easiest way to do that is to take it back to a mathematical number. So if you're hearing feedback, you can listen to it and say, boy, is that above or below 440 hertz? Or I know another one of your favorites is the emergency broadcast tone. Well, the, the, tone, the emergency broadcast tone, which they don't use anymore nowadays, but the emergency broadcast tone we all grew up on hearing. This is a test. This is only a test, and they would broadcast that tone. That's a 1K tone. That's 1,000 hertz. That's in the exact middle of the audio spectrum. Right, and so by knowing where that is, and that's one of my favorites as well, I always I hear feedback or I hear something, I go, is that above or below 1,000 hertz? And then I go, is it above or below 440, because a lot of times I end up in that frequency having some things you know, that, that I want to adjust on, my, on an equalizer. And so being able to quantify that sound and put it into numbers makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. to uh, go ahead then and to actually um, make changes and affect the sound in those well, areas. A, there's a lot of different way, areas that these numbers come into play, Gary. When you look at a mixer, a lot of times they'll have numbers on it. Hmm. So you adjust uh, you know, the frequencies based on the numbers that are printed on the mixer. So there's a lot of areas where this sound comes in, the numbers come into play in sound. Also, when you're looking at uh, specifications on a microphone, it's all numbers. So if understanding these frequencies and what these numbers mean is important as you're operating sound. That definitely is. You know, some things to apply in here, and I guess I would call this kind of under the uh, practical, you know, tips. One of those is to, you know, know where a thousand hertz is and to kind of tune your ear, so forth, and you know, know where A440 is. Um,